Hi everyone! Today I will show you how to convert floating point numbers from binary to decimal and from decimal to binary with Python. And then in the end of this tutorial, we will combine this code with our KiwiMD mobile app, which we have started building in part one of this project. But if you guys are not entirely sure how the math behind the conversion works, definitely check out my math tutorial where I explain in detail exactly how to do it. Now, I've included both of these links in the description of the video, so check them out, and once you do, let's start coding. This time, we will begin inside Jupyter Notebook, and once we've finished figuring out the functionality or the algorithms of our conversion, we can then copy this code and we can combine it with our KVMD project. So we will begin by converting binary to decimal. And if you guys remember, that was represented by state zero in the first part of our app. And then we will also need a number to convert. So we will create a new variable called num, which will equal to 101.0111. And since in both bases, We've made a distinction between the whole number and the fraction. We will also do the same thing here. So in the line below, we will type whole fract, as in fraction, equals num.split. And where we would like to split this string is in the dot. So that anything that comes before the dot is represented by whole. And anything that comes after the dot is represented by fract. And once we have these basic variables ready, we can move on with the actual function. So we will begin by if state equals zero, then we will convert binary to decimal. And since we already know how to convert whole numbers, we will simply reassign whole to be equal to int whole in the base of two which will return the decimal representation of our whole number. If you guys remember, that would be 5. So let's quickly test it. Let's say print whole. And we get 5, as I promised. Next, we will create a variable to collect our floating point totals. We will call it floating, and this will equal to 0 initially. Now, if you remember the algorithm, we have multiplied each of our digits by its corresponding power of 2 in such way that the first digit of our fraction is multiplied by 2 in the power of minus 1, the next digit is multiplied by 2 in the power of minus 2, and so on. And we will need the help of the enumerate function to achieve that. So right below, we will type for idx and digit in enumerate, and inside the round brackets, we specify our fract variable, which we have collected above, which represent, represents the floating point portion of our number. So let's actually print both index and digit, just to make sure we understand how enumerate works. We see that our digit variable represents each of our digits one at a time, while our index variable represents a sequence that starts from zero and ends in the length of our string. And since in our first iteration, the formula would be zero times two in the power of minus one, we can replace zero with digit, and we can replace minus one with minus idx plus one. That way, in the first iteration, this equals one, in the next iteration, it equals 2, and minus just negates it. And now we can go ahead and delete the print statement. We don't need it anymore. And actually, since our digits were collected as a string, we will need to convert our digit variable into an integer before we are trying to multiply it by other integers. Otherwise, we will get an error. And once we've made the conversion, we can then assign this expression to floating plus equals, which will increment our floating variable with every new digit instance. And of course, once we are done with our for loop, we will simply print whole plus floating. Now let's go ahead and rerun the cell with shift enter. 
and boom, we are done with the binary to decimal conversion. Now let's go ahead and tackle state one. For this, we will have to adjust the state from zero to one, and we will have to adjust our number value to a decimal one. Then we can move on with creating an else clause, where we will convert decimal to binary. And here we will do things a bit differently. So we will begin by initializing a decimal places variable, and we will limit our conversion to 10 decimal places maximum. Since one of the biggest problems with this conversion is that we can just keep going forever and ever. And while it's not a big issue with floats like quarter or a half, it is a huge issue with floats like a third or one sixth because 0 0.33333 can just keep going forever and we can keep converting it forever in an infinite loop. That's why we are limiting our app to 10 decimal places max. Cool. So right underneath, since we already know how to convert whole numbers into binary, we will reassign the whole variable to equal bin, which stands for binary, and we will pass the integer instance of our whole portion of the number. And let's go ahead and print whole. We see that the bin function returns a prefix of 0b to our number. So let's get rid of that prefix by slicing it off. So we would like to skip the first two characters and we would like to keep the rest of them. Next, we will slightly edit the fract portion of our number and we would like to add zero point in front of it. And since this expression will return a string, we would like to convert it into a floating point number with the float function. And right underneath, we will initialize a floating variable, which will equal to an empty list for now. And we will use this list to store the remainders. So let's begin by limiting our conversion to 10 decimal places maximum. We will do this with a for loop. So for i in range decimal, Places, which will begin our iteration. And there are actually a few ways to do this. We can either use the floor function, we can either use modulo, but in this example, we will keep things simple. So our conditional statement will begin with if fract times two is smaller than one. If that's the case, we would like to append the string of zero into our floating list. And the reason why we append it as a string is because I would like to combine it with the join method in the very end and it's just more comfortable with strings. And once we do that, we can go ahead and reassign fract to equal fract times two, which we can simply write with the times equals operator. Next, we will tackle a scenario where the result is bigger than one. We will do this by typing else if fract times two is bigger than one. We will then, of course, append the string of one into our floating list without the typo. And we will then, of course, reassign fract to be equal to fract times two minus one. And then lastly, else if fract times two equals 1.0, because we are dealing with floating point numbers, we will again append one to our floating list. We'll just copy this command and we will break free from this loop. And once we finished our conditional statement, we will leave the loop and we will print whole plus dot plus an empty string dot join and inside the round brackets, we specify our floating list. So this command concatenates all the items of our floating list, and it joins them without any gaps, just an empty string in between each of the items. So if we go ahead and rerun this cell with shift enter, instead of getting a list of separate items, all our items are joined together. Cool, so now we know how to convert decimal floats into binary floats up to 10 decimal places max. 
And here we used up only four of our decimal places. So potentially, if we choose a different kind of fraction, let's say 33, we are now using up all the available decimal places we have defined. Cool, and now we can simply go back to our KeyVMD base converter app and we will slightly refactor it. We can see that right now our convert function only deals with whole numbers. That's why we will make a distinction. So right above this code, we will type if the string of point not in self dot input dot text, which represent the number we are fetching from the user. So if this is the case, then we will indent all these lines of code and we are already dealing with the scenario of whole numbers. So right underneath, we will include an else clause, which deals with floating point numbers conversion. And once again, without the typo, and here, this is where we can paste our Jupyter notebook code with a few slight modifications. So let's go ahead and minimize this window, pull out our Jupyter notebook, and we will copy the code starting from our split command up until the very end. And we will then paste it right underneath our comment. We'll probably need to fix the indentation. And we will then refactor all the temporary variables we used so they match the attributes of our class. So our num string is actually self.input.text, which is again the string we have fetched from our user. Then our state variable is actually the self.state attribute. And then instead of just printing the result, we will display them on our graphic interface. That's why we will copy these two commands from above. We will paste them underneath our for loop and we'll of course fix the indentation. We will refactor binary to decimal and then we will display the string instance of our whole plus floating newly converted number with the G in the end. We'll of course get rid of the print command. We don't need it anymore. And we will copy these two lines of code. It will scroll a bit down and right before our print statement, we will paste these two lines of code. We will refactor decimal to binary and we will copy the command from our print statement and replace our string instance with it because we are already getting a string in return. Now let's remove this print command. Let's save this file and rerun it. And let's begin with a binary number first. So let's say 101.0111. Let's hit convert. We got the result we expected. Now, just in case, let's double check 1000.01, which should be eight and a quarter. Convert, eight and a corner, quarter. And just to make sure we didn't mess up anything, let's try eight which is not a float, and let's try seven, which is also not a float, and it still works like a charm. Once we hit flip, we can type a decimal number, let's say 825, we'll hit convert, and it also returns the correct result. We can double check it with the number 15, which should be 1111, let's hit convert, and it's perfectly converting our decimal numbers as well. But the problem is we still are not handling exceptions. So if, for instance, we type here a bunch of letters and we hit convert, our app fails. So let's quickly add an exception clause. And it is actually super easy to do. So in the top of our convert function, we will type try. We will then indent all the following lines of code with tab. And we will then add an accept statement. And if we check inside our terminal, the error we got was a value error. So let's copy it with control C and we will paste it right after we type accept. And in this case, we would like to remove the text of our converted label and we will turn it into an empty string. And then depending on the state, so if self.state equals zero without the typo as usual, we will then assign a new text to our label label, which will equal, please enter a valid decimal number. And then if our state 
is one, we will refactor this line of code and we will assign, please enter a valid decimal number instead. So state number one is requesting a binary number, but instead I will type something completely different and I will hit convert. Our app no longer fails, but instead we see a message that the number we have entered was not valid. So if we do type a valid number, let's say seven and a quarter, and we hit convert, we get the correct result. So let's double check if it works the same with decimal numbers. So let's hit flip. And instead of a decimal number, we will type a gibberish string. Once again, we will hit convert, still doesn't fail. Really cool. So if we do eight and a quarter and hit convert, everything still works like a charm and our app is complete. Awesome. Now, thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon in part three of this project where we finally load this app into our Android mobile device. I'm super excited. You guys stay tuned. I'll see you soon.